This week at Bungie, this week at Bungie, we're talking weapons. This is it, the last twop of the season. It's been a blast watching Guardians splice their way through the Vex network, tackle Vault of Glass, and pile up a ton of new rewards during Season of the Splicer. We have jam-packed a lot of Destiny moments since Beyond Light debut, debut, I can never say that word, <laughs> debut, debuted last fall as we prepare to look forward next week. Let's take a look back at some of the most epic of Destiny moments. We are less than a week away from a big reveal showcase. No spoilers, but we have a tune-in page set up, and we will be streaming both on Twitch and YouTube on August 24th. Seven years of destiny have led to this moment. Join us to learn more about a new adventure, unlike you've unlike any you've encountered before. The pre-show is starting at 8 a.m. Pacific, and the showcase, it's showcase itself will knock off, will kick off at 9 a.m. Pacific. Come find out if you can survive the truth. Weapon tuning. Next week's update is ushing, ushing in a new season and a big sandbox update to go with it. We have already covered ability tuning here, armor and mod changes here, and now it's time to go over what is changing with weapons. Here is weapons feature lead Chris Proctor with a full rundown. Good day, it's Chris again. We've got a lot to talk about for season 15, including stasis weapons, a rework of fusion rifles, and several changes intended to make certain weapons more relevant in the new activity. And with the new artifact mods, let's kick off by clarifying some terminology. Definition of terms. Some of the recent info on weapons we've been putting out, we've put out, has been confusing. And while I generally like to use our internal terms for concept where possible, in some cases these require too much explanation to use them externally. Here are some definitions and clarifications to help. Fall off. Internally, we use fall off min and fall off max to mean start and end. But moving forward, we'll use these externally, using damage as an example. But the same logic applies to aim assist and what not. Damage fall off start, the distance at which damage fall off begins or stops during maximum damage. Damage fall off end, the distance at which damage fall off ends or hits the damage floor. Projectiles, we've used various terms to describe these types externally including borrowing items from other genres. Oops, but we've settled on these. Hit scan, a projectile that instantly hits. This applies to most weapons in uh, the game. For example, auto rifles, hand cannons, fusion rifles, fully drawn bows at most distances. Non-hit scan, a projectile with travel time, sometimes having physics bounces 
and often having explosive damage and slash or homing. For example, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, partially drawn bows, and Yoten. Shotguns, spread angle, the cone that pellets come out in, not to be confused with one of the other types of cones. This determines the size of the outer ring below. Destiny 2 shotguns don't have pure RNG for pellet distribution, though yes, it sure feels like it sometimes, which seems worth diving into. A shotgun shot contains 12 pellets spread out across three rings as follows. Center, one pellet ring in the middle. Inner ring, four wedges with one pellet each. Outer ring, seven wedges with one pellet each. So, aside from the center, which is in a fixed location, each pellet is only randomized inside a defined wedge angle and in inner slash outer radius. Season 15 introduces legendary stasis weapons, and we've seen some concern about how these are intended to work, particularly in PvP, so here are some details. Stasis power weapons are in the power slot, but all other stasis weapons are in the kinetic slot. This is to avoid overcrowding the energy slot, and so that it's responsible to use one in match game content. The kinetic slot won't be renamed at this time. Stasis weapons don't intrinsically do anything differently from weapons of other damage types, but they are the only weapons that can roll with stasis perks. We generally intend stasis perks with slowing or freezing effects to have a kill trigger this being easy enough to trigger in pve but f and fun to use but not obnoxious to play against in pvp now that we have addressed quick draws permanent plus 100 handling buff we see more people using the quick slop glitch the glitch uses combinations of inputs to animation cancel allowing near instant weapon swaps we want the handling stack to continue to have value on weapons and don't want, for example, aggressive shotguns to lose their key downside. Slow swaps due to the intentional side effect of the animation system. Running out of primary ammo has never been tactically, inter tactically interesting. Running out of hard, running out in hard PVE content, or because you were on a tear in PVP, was a weird and sometimes frustrating experience that we would like to not subject anyone to in the future. All primary ammo weapons now have infinite ammo. Inertia override has been adjusted to account for there being no primary bricks. See the August 5th, 2021 Ability Swap. Drop Mag's downside of reducing reserve ammo is now almost meaningless. Reworked to be plus reload speed, minus magazine size. Compact arrow shaft's upside of increasing reserve ammo likewise. Reworked to be plus reload, plus handling. Updated some other perks that refer to the reserves in a way that are no longer accurate. See notes on Fighting Lion and Sweet Business in the exotics section below. Target Farming Trials weapon is much more efficient in Season 15, and we have some cool new perks for players to play with that we wanted to put on our Trials weapon. All Trials weapons available in, six, six, in Season 15 now have 7 perks in each column. Was 5. 
Would Max play her levels on weapons launched and we reissued several weapons, we saw how frustrated players were, ha were at having to regrind their Faber units. Since the perk pools haven't changed, based on that, our reissue guidelines for sim Season 13 onwards were to replace most of the perks. Turns out that was an overcorrection and that certain perks in the original pools have become part of the identity of the weapon. Moving forward, the guidelines for reissues will be to remove the least useful 2 to 3 perks and add 2 to 3 new perks that gives the weapon some new options and may result in an entirely new top tier rolls without removing the old one. We've made some small adjustments to the weapons reissued in 3.2.1 update to move these in the direction of the new reissue guidelines. And w if you are wondering why our community managers were asking for everyone's favorite roles, now you know why. Added one or two of the original perks to each column for the Luna weapons reissued in 3.2.1, i.e. the lectern weapons are only. Since these can be target farmed, we're okay with increasing the size of the perk pools in this case. Added one of the original perks to one or both columns for the Dreaming City weapons reissued in 3.2.1, Tiger's Fight, Twilight Oath, Abide the Return. Since these can't be target farmed yet, we don't want to increase the size of the pools by more than one. Archetypes. Note, Exotic received these changes as written unless otherwise mentioned in the Exotic section below. Breach grenade launchers are increasing as a pain point in PvP, and with the shotgun nerf we're seeing a small increase in usage. These change aim to reduce the ease of getting big splash damage for priming or cleaning up targets. We'll watch how things change and make further adjustments in a future update if needed. Note that we're fine with how they perform in PvE, so have compensated there. Number 1. Reduced blast damage by 0.4 meters. Example, max blast radius decreased from 4.55 meters to 4.15 meters. Min blast radius decreased from 3.8 meters to 3.4 meters. Number 2. Reduce splash damage by 20, which reduces total damage for a direct hit from 220 to 200, before taking spite or proximity grenades into account. Increase damage by in PvE by 12% because the above splash damage changes this result in a small overall buff to combined damage. Wither Horde is unaffected. While machine gun usage is surprisingly high, we felt that we weren't filling, fulfilling their intended role in high difficulty content. Ammo efficient ad clear and secondary single target sustained damage. Increased in PvE by 20%. Scout rifles and half cannons have felt weaker than we'd like in hard PvE content for quite a while. Increased damage versus miners by 15%. Fusion rifles have benefited indirectly from the mid-season 14 shotgun nerf but with fusion rifle subfamilies weren't as different from each other as we wanted and weren't all useful in the variety of content. So we looked at all the options we had for diversifying them and ended up with some substantial changes. This isn't intended to be a global buff to fusion rifles, 
but we expect some of these to be better counters to other weapons than they were previously. Note that we also evaluated some other options, which were a worth a bit of discussion. Given the projectile's travel time, we did like the, the idea of this behavior in Destiny 1, but our investigation found that there are networking issues with firing rapid bursts of non-hitscan projectiles, and they didn't play as well as we wanted them to. We may look at this option again in the future. Burst rate of fire. This would have meant touching design data and audio for every fusion rifle we've ever shipped well beyond the scope of what we wanted for this change, and also not that interesting a change. Increased PvE damage bonus such that all subfamilies have a 15% PvE bonus. Previously, high impact was 0, precision and adaptive were 10, and rapid fire was 12.5% pushed subfamilies further apart, adjusting charge time. Shots, shots fired per burst was 7 for all subfamilies, and damage. Note that the base below means without battery perks, a charge time masterwork, or the adept charge time mod. High impacts charge slower and while still strong, require more planning to use effectively. Base charge time increased from 0 0.86 seconds to 1 second. Shots per burst reduced from 7 to 5. Reduced total damage per, per burst. In play testing, we found that charging these in the open is super risky, but pre-charging around corners or otherwise in safety is very effective. With the reduced shots per burst, they are now less reliant on stability, so we can stack a bit more range. Precisions and adaptives are close to unchanged. Base charge time is unchanged. 7 per shots per burst is unchanged at 7. Very slightly increased total damage per burst. In playtesting, we feel that these are very effective all around without stepping on the niches of high impacts and rapid fires. I'll be keeping a good plug one for PvP. Rapid fires charge faster, allowing them to be used reactively against charging enemies or aggressively when pushing forward. Base charge time decreased from 0 0.54 seconds to 0 0.46 seconds. Shots per burst increased from 7 to 9. Increased total damage per burst. In play testing, we found that these are very effective against shotgun rushers. The combination of them needing to be closer and you have a shorter time charge time work well together. And if you have a good enough timing, you can fire two bursts with a rapid fire before a high impact user finishes charging their first. With the increased shots per burst, they are now more reliant on stability, but with the increased damage, they're less reliant on range. Parts of this work required adjusting several fusion rifle perks and one mod. Backup plan's importation was incompatible with the fusion rifle changes, and we felt like the perk could use a rework anyway. Removed plus 100 to charge time stat, adjusted tar charge time multiplier from 0 0.85 to 0 0.7, now scales damage by 0 0.8. Liquid coils and accelerated coils needed a rework for similar reasons. Both converted to a scale charge time and damage instead of modifying the charge time stat. The final effect is much the same as before, but these are now more robust. However, they won't visibly change the tar charge time stat in the inspection screen. The adept charge time mod felt pointless, and we feel like it would still be balanced against other mods if it didn't reduce damage. 
charged functionality to scale charge time directly instead of charging the ch changing the charge time stat without adjusting the damage. A note on the charge time masterwork. A fusion rifle's damage is determined by its charge time stat, similar to how most other weapons' damage is determined by their rate of fire stat. Masterworks can only increase weapon stats for performance reasons, so it's not possible to change how charge time maps onto damage without big changes to how the charge time stat works. We investigated doing this by making the masterwork a perk, but this would be cause fusion rifles to exceed the perk budget, resulting in bad things happening, as mentioned in a prior twop. With the fusion rifle we work, rework, we feel that this masterwork is more viable. It now rarely reduces bolts to kill, so may feel not so may feel not feel like a downgrade in the same way as before. We'll be watching to see how this plays out and have some options to address the issue if that's still needed. Adjusted the fusion rifle stat order so it matches other weapons. Stability and handling were out of order. This is a big change to fusion rifles, including all exotic fusions, so we'll be watching for any major issues and we'll make tweaks as needed. Exonics. The Anarchy Grenade Launcher has been dominant for years now. We're ignoring the season with sweet grenade launcher artifact mods, of course, being near mandatory for certain raid bosses, combined with example double slug shotguns as well as excelling as a solo weapon and for agglers in some encounters. We like that it's a great choice choice for hard solo content and trapping, trapping enemy spawns slash choke points. But we don't want it to remain part of a dominant tactic for boss damage, and particularly we don't want it to be great for boss damage and agglers in a single encounter. With this change, we expect it to remain strong without being borderline usable as a primary weapon. Reduced total reserve plus magazine ammunition from 26 to 16. Reduced damage by 30% versus bosses. Champions are not bosses. Xenophage was already top notch, so we didn't need to benefit from the global machine buff. It does benefit from the damage per bullet buff to machine guns, but now has a slower fire rate to compensate, resulting in a slightly lower damage per second, but higher burst damage and sustained damage, since it's now more ammo efficient. Reduced rate of fire from 120 to 90 RPM. Receives less of the machine gun PVE damage buff. Fighting Lion has always been fun, but not dominant in PvE, so we weren't worried about the impact infinite ammo would have there. However, enabling fast, unlimited grenade spamming was too much in PvE based on internal playtests. So we've addressed that specific case without significantly impacting its feel in PvE. Fighting Lion reserve ammo increased from a lot to infinite, Receives the same changes as other breach grenade launchers. Reduced base stat reload to zero. Based breach grenade launchers with a zero reload stat reload very, very slowly. Now increased reload speed to its previous level on damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. We'll be keeping an eye on this, but believe it's in a good place with this change. And note that we're not going to over-nerf over, over -nerf an exotic with its own subreddit. You should be manually. You shouldn't be manually reloading Fighting Lion anyway. Vex Mythiclass. We were cautious with tuning this one at launch, knowing that shipping a dominant weapon that is incredibly low ownership would break PvP, and aimed for balance. 
but erring on the side of not letting it ship too strong. However, it felt short on balanced. Ownership is much higher now, and we want it to be strong enough to be a desirable reward from Vault of Glass. Range stat increased to be to be your near best in class for high impact auto rifles. Increased stability stat. Reworked catalyst to grant stability and damage after a kill. Increased rate of fire from 360 to 390. Reduced linear fusion rifle mode charge time from 820 to 533. Same as standard linear fusion rifles. No longer loses overcharge stacks on stow except when in linear fusion rifle mode. Merciless, we've had to touch this anyway because of the fusion rifle changes and figured if we're in there we might as well make a buff we've been thinking about. Updated perk to account for fewer shots per burst should build up charge rate at the m at the same amount per burst as before. Reduced the damage colony for increasing charge rate by 40%. Yotin, because of how the charge time stat works with the fusion rifle changes, we made a small change to avoid breaking this weapon. In playtesting, it al makes almost no difference, but if I didn't mention it w would, someone would notice. Reduce charge time from 8.2 seconds to 0 0.78 seconds, i.e. charges 0 0.04 seconds faster. Slightly reduce damage per shot. Bastion feels very strong with shotguns being less dominant, so we're preemptively, preemptively adjusting it in PvP. It's also super low usage in PvE. So we're buffing it there too. Reduced damage by 15. Can now not quite kill a guardian with one shot in the three shot burst it fires. Increased spread angle by 10%. Increased PVE damage by 25%. So overall a 10% increase in PvP, a PVE. Sweet Business's perks, refilling the magazine when picking up primary, no longer works in a world without primary, so it's been adjusted. Now refill the magazine on picking up speci special slash heavy ammo instead of primary. Firing line, we like the idea of the perk. It was just giving away a bit too much damage for almost free. Reduced damage bonus to 20% plus 20% precision damage to all supported weapon archetypes was highly, highly variable depending on weapon type. Will roll on some sniper rifles, linear fusion rifles, and machine guns, and maybe some other stuff in the future. Certain damage perks only affected impact damage on explosive weapons. We've updated these specific perks to also include detonation damage, kill clip, rampage, adrenaline junkie. We also fixed incorrect rarity on some recently shipped weapon perks. VFX. Weapon VFX were all custom and some didn't meet our desired cool factor. So we rebuilt these to speed up the process of adding new weapons or updating old ones while updating the visuals out at the same time. Updated and all grenade launcher and rocket launcher VFX. Legendary fusion and linear fusion rifles now have distinct damage type charge VFX. The near future, we're devoting a lot of energy to the Witch Queen expansion and there are a ton of things changing in a few weeks, so we want to see how things shake out before deciding on further turning. We'll be watching Season 14 watch launch closely and are ready to make some small adjustments as needed in the first half of the season. The more distant future, but still before the Witch Queen. Linear fusion rifles and caster frame swords are still not where we want them to be, 
so expect some tweaks. We're also looking at underused or underpowered exotics, and we'll be taking a pass at some of them, including Arbalist, Cirrus Regime, Cryothesis 77K, Malfeasance, and more. If you have inching, if you should wait, sorry. If you have issues with spamming high rate of fire, semi-automatic weapons as fast as possible. Something we've got something in the works for you. Priming a target and quickly swapping for a cleanup is easier than we like, and we're looking at options for building towards faster swap speeds. We've got a step at hitting both of these points coming. Witch Queen and beyond. We've talked previously about wanting legendary weapons to have more identity based on their source and expect to ship a new system for this or close to the Witch Queen. In Season 15, we tweaked exotic primary weapons to generate ammo faster through ammo finder mods and we have another change plan to make them more enticing in hard PvE content. That's all we've got for Weapon Changer now. We're looking forward to seeing how PvP and PvE metas shape up once you have your all your hands on them next week. Chris. Guns, guns, guns. We're still holding a lot of the details on Season of the Redacted close to the chest, including the new Season 15 arsenal you will start to discover next week. We do want to show off some of the other weapons you will be earning next season. Next season's Ritual Quest weapon is a rocket launcher with the explosive light perk. As is the custom, you can then collect Gambit, Crucible, and Vanguard themed weapon ornaments by upgrading your rank on the vendors. We are adding three weapons as post-game rewards for completing Vanguard Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible matches. These will drop ran randomly after completing these strikes with random rolls. We have a scout rifle, an auto rifle I assume, and a sidearm. This could be a sniper though, who knows, or a pulse. We also have plans to freshen up the loot pool of the Pros of Prophecy Dungeon. We've seen a lot of feedback to bring forward weapons original reward from the Trials of the Nine and thought that adding these nine themed dun nine themed dungeon was a great fit. These weapons have been upgraded with random rolls, and certain ones will drop from specific encounters of the prophecy dungeon. So we have the sniper rifle, we have the pulse rifle, we have the I assume linear fusion or auto rifle, we have the shotgun, we have a sidearm and we have a hand cannon. On top of all these weapons, we're also updating the world pool with some fresh drops. Here are new weapons you can expect to start seeing pop up in the wild. Again, we have a sniper rifle, the pulse rifle, the auto rifle, a scout rifle, a hand cannon, and a sidearm. Relief efforts at Bungie, it's our mission to build worlds that inspire friendship, but we also realize the fortunate position we find ourselves in, and we believe in the power, companionship, and generosity of our community to amplify our efforts to reduce distress and suffering in the world. We believe that games can be a powerful force for good, and we believe that it is our responsibility to use our voice and to support your desire to help those in need. The Bungie's Foundation's mission is to put those beliefs to work. We are people. F we are a people-focused focus organization that builds and empowers our community to improve the health and well-being of children, uplift the rights of all individuals and community, and provide aid in times of crisis. We act as the charitable, charitable giving arm of Bungie in order to express our company's values outwardly to the world around us. And we have developed strategic programs and partnerships in order to accomplish our mission. Our partners in Disaster Relief, Direct Relief, and Team Rubicon are doing profound and meaningful work around the globe 
to provide direct aid, agility, and expertise in response to the numerous humanitarian crises our world is facing, including the Haiti earthquake and global impacts of climate change and COVID-19. We invite you to jump into the action with us to develop a fund that will both support their efforts as well as help us build a pool of reserves that can be leveraged to support future humanitarian needs strategically and rapidly. Between now and September 1st at 11.59pm Pacific Time, we have a few exciting opportunities to help those in need around the world along with some incredible incentives to thank you for doing so. Here's how it will work. Direct donations. All donations to the Bungie Foundation will support the Disaster Relief Fund. Donate $25 or more and receive the Anchor Point emblem distributed via email on Thursday, September 9th. Guardians of Hope t-shirt pre-order. Pre-order the Guardians of Hope t-shirt from T. Rubicon's web store, and the Bungie Foundation will match up to 25 k We'll provide shipping, up to shipping updates in a later TWAP. Every customer will receive the Vital Elixir emblem, distributed on Thursday, September 9th. Bungie Store Initiatives. All Bungie Store Initiatives, all purchased from the Bungie Foundation collection, will support the Disaster Relief Fund. All purchases from this collection will receive the Planet of Peace emblem delivered via email after purchase is completed. It's got a nice little heart. Notes to be eligible for the in-game items listed above. Donations and slash or purchases must be made between August 19th and September 1st at 11.59pm Pacific Time. Unique redemption codes will be emailed to you on Thursday. September 9th, following the completion of the fundraiser. Donations must be exactly $25 or higher to qualify for the Anchor Point emblem. Combining smaller donations does not qualify. Limit one redemption code per item per email for qualifying donations or purchases. A little bit more about our partners. Team Rubicon. Team Rubicon is a veteran-led disaster response organization helping vulnerable communities prepare, respond, and recover after natural disasters and humanitarian crisis. They acknowledge that crises such as COVID-19, impacts of climate change, and increased natural disasters are ubiquitous. This is why they raise funds. Well, this is why funds raised to the community will support Team Rubicon's effort to meet critical needs around the U.S. and globally, including high-priority targets such as the Haiti earthquake, wildfires, and global COVID-19 support. But these funds will do more than that. The Bungie Foundation and Team Rubicon's goal is to leverage these funds funds to provide exponential and increase incremental impact to the most vulnerable populations here and around the world now and into the future direct relief direct relief is a humanitarian humanitarian aid organization active in all 50 states and more than 80 countries with a mission to improve the health and lives of people affected by poverty or emergencies without regard to politics, religion, or ability to pay. Each emergency has specific characteristics that are dependent on local facts and circumstances. Direct Relief coordinates with local, national, and international responders to ensure efficient use of resources while avoiding duplication of efforts or logistical bottlenecks. Funds raised through this campaign will generate efficient responses to today's major crises and will leverage resources to maximize continued health improvement around the world. Love, your friends from the Bungie Foundation. Us being Bungie artists, as Season of Splicer winds down, we wanted to take a quick look back at some of the amazing art created for it. We have lined up several of the artists who worked on Season of the Splicer 
to showcase their work. Make sure you click their names to see all the art they have available on their personal sites. And we have the the Atheon gates, the the the, uh, the time gates, I think the vault of glass, the actual vault of glass, made by Mike Stavrides. Stavrides, and we have the Vex network, very cyberpunky, um, such by Lanaming, another another kind of cyberpunky Vex network by Mike Poe. The um, fallen hub area in the uh, the um, um, the helm by Thad Stefan. Redacted report. As we are about to usher in the changing of the seasons, the player support team has important updates on next week's update. This is the report. Update three point three point zero. On Tuesday, August twenty fourth. Destiny 2 will undergo maintenance in preparation for Destiny 2 Update 3.3.0. Below is a timeline of events. Note, some things may be subject to change during this maintenance period. 8 a.m. PDT. Maintenance begin. 8.45 a.m. PDT. Players are removed from activities. Destiny 2 is brought offline. 10 a.m. PDT. Update 3.3.0 will be available across all platforms and regions. Players will be able to log back into Destiny 2. 12 p.m. PDT. Destiny 2 maintenance is expected to conclude. Below are some issues that will be resolved with up Update 3.3.0. A complete list will be shared when the update goes live. Players will no longer receive the bird error code when trying to get into the Wall of Wishes. The Adept Big One Spec Weapon mod will now correctly appear in the collections. Bounties, Valor, and Weekly Challenges will correctly gain progress in Crucible matches. For more information, players should visit our Destiny Server and Update Status Help article. Claim your rewards. The following will reset and become unclaimable when Season of the Redacted launches on August 24th. Season 14 Bungie Rewards, Season 14 Seasonal Challenges, Vanguard Tokens, Valor Rewards, Infamy Rewards, Splicer, Servitor, and Grabs. Season of the Chosen Season Pass Items on our previous season webpage, make sure to check each character. Some people may have to use our Destiny Companion mobile app to claim these names or rewards. Crossplay names. As a reminder, crossplay will go live early in Season of the Redacted. When players log in for the first time to play Season of the Redacted, the name on whatever platform they log in will become their bungee name for when pro crossplay goes live. Below is a list of reminders regarding a player's bungee name. The display name of the first platform that players log into playing beginning at 10 a.m. PDT on August 24th will become the player's bungee name. Platform ID numbers, non-static characters, and symbols will be removed and excluded. If a name violates our code of contact, it will be changed to Guardian. Name changes won't be available until a later update. For Steam players, your Steam profile name, not your Steam account name, will become your bungee name. A name can be up to 26 characters in length. Cyrillic characters are supported in each language that Destiny 2 supports. The following languages are also supported. Japanese, Korean, Simplified Chinese, and Traditional Chinese. Heroes Memorial Quest. Some players have reported issues acquiring the final season of the Splicer Quest. To resolve this issue, players should log into each character and check the Splicer Servitor and the Quest Archive for this quest to collect. Please be aware that this quest can only be completed on one character. Players may have to listen to each radio message in the helm, first by going to orbit and back to the helm each time until all radio messages have been listened to. Players may have to complete all Season 14 quests in their inventory and log out and back on into the game. 
Players may have to pick up and complete a bounty and complete the override activity. Known issues. While we continue investigate, investigating various known issues, here is a list of the latest issues that were reported to us in our help forum. A full list of known issues relating to Season of the Redacted will be shared once the she season goes live. We have resolved an issue causing the gifts of weekly bounty in the Destiny 2 Twitch extension to not complete for viewers who purchase gift subs. Players who purchase gift subs for the bounty can now require their bounty rewards from Mend Holiday at the tower before the weekly reset. We have resolved an issue causing Xbox players to receive negative silver balances. Players who had issues earlier should restart their platform and Destiny 2 app and log back in to verify. Players with a full inventory will not earn Season of Redacted seasonal currency and the currency will not go to the Postmaster. The Arbalist Exotic Linear Fusion Rifle will not work with anti-champion mods in Season of the Redacted. In a future update, anti-barrier will be added as an intrinsic perk for the weapon. When charged melee is mapped to an input, changing the bow low button layout will retain that mapping. Players can reset the custom low layout or clear the mapping for charged melee to fix this issue. The Vex Fanatics radio Radiolarian Fluid Pool persists and continues to do damage for 8 per 9 seconds after the visual pool disappears. The elevator and the corrupted strike sometimes cannot be interacted with, blocking the progression of the strike entirely. Warlock's Nova Warp doesn't blink if Hold Sprint is active. A second weekly Nightfall Scorch stat tracker is present in the stat trackers. For a full list of emergent issues in Destiny 2, players can review our known issues article. Players who observe other issues should report them to our health forum. Movie night. Every Sunday night in my house is movie night. We have a rotation of who gets to pick and popcorn. Se uh, who picks the movie and popcorn seasonal flavoring? Each week, my oldest holds the record of most consecutive picks of Monsters Inc. in a row at five. Anyway, movie of the week is kind of like that, in that the movies are involved and it's weekly. Here are this week's picks. Movie of the week, Destiny. Uh, appears to be a um, uh, just a show of. I'd hit play, but it's probably loud. Um, but yeah, just to be in a showing of like a uh, fashion show and such. Movie of the week. We've recreated the Lion King in Destiny 2's movie of the week. I will be putting these. Uh, these are not ASMR, but. Uh, because I support people that get movie of the week like this, I will be putting these guys in the link. Or come come to the Bungie forum and check this out. If your video was selected, please make sure you put your Bungie.net profile in the link in the description of your video. And then the art of the week. The art of the week is always just beautiful. I'm going to turn this down, but um, Eris Moy is complete. Basically, it's Eris Moy and Crota, the five nightmares, which is beautiful. And then we got Mithrax riding on like a cybernetic wave, <laughs> synth wave, the Delph Count Boy submit I painted for. <laughs> um, for five more sleeps until the reveal. Alright, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you're asleep or something, <laughs> or at least calm. I know sometimes I don't like, I don't like listening to all the hype and such. I just want to kind of read it. So figure there might be other people. Alright guys, have a good one. GG and goodbye.